Ah, life on Earth is so much better with you. Saw, so, dude. You've got astronomy and physics, botany and ecology, zoology, geology, chemistry and biology. Want to understand the world and all that it is? Then sit back and kick it with this list of science with. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, the Wiz, Miss Klauka. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about that great ball of gas burning millions of kilometers away. That's right, the sun. The sun is our solar system star. It is made up of mostly hydrogen and helium, which undergo nuclear fusion to create energy in the form of heat, light, and other forms of radiation. The sun is held together by gravity and rotates on its axis much like the earth. Unlike the earth, however, you will find it rotating much faster at its equator than you will at the poles. Did you know that 99.8% of all mass in the solar system is found in the sun? That's almost the entire solar system. Put it like this, if this represented all the planets, asteroids, meteors, everything else, then this would represent the sun. Pretty crazy, huh? Now the sun is made up of many layers, kind of like the earth. It has interior layers like our core, mantle, and crust, and atmospheric layers like our troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. The interior of the sun is called the core. It's a lot like Earth's core. It's very hot because in the core is where nuclear fusion occurs. The core is the source of all the sun's energy. Next is the radiation zone or radiative zone. Energy from the core moves outward through the radiation zone. It moves using, you guessed it, radiation, which means the energy travels in waves. The last layer of the sun's interior is called the convective zone or convection zone. This is the outermost layer of the sun. You know what? I'll give you one guess as to how energy moves in this layer. If you said convection, you're right. The innermost layer of the atmosphere is called the photosphere. This layer is much thinner than the rest of the layers. In fact, it is only about 100 kilometers thick, which compared to the 1.4 million kilometer sun, it's pretty small. When you are looking at a picture of the sun, you are looking at the photosphere. The next layer of the sun's atmosphere is the chromosphere. This layer is almost never visible. The only time you might see it is at the beginning or the end of a solar eclipse when the sun is blocked by the moon. The outermost layer of the atmosphere is called the corona. It is usually invisible, but during a total solar eclipse, you can see the glow of the corona. The corona extends into space hundreds of kilometers. We refer to this stretch as solar wind. Models are the best way for us to learn about features of the sun. Since we can't look directly at the sun, we're going to build a model to demonstrate the sun's properties using cookies. To build this model, you will need cookies, whatever your favorite kind is, chocolate chips, the mini ones work the best, licorice or any other rope shaped candy, frosting, again, your favorite flavor, and sprinkles. I recommend getting red, orange, or yellow. First, frost your sugar cookie or whatever kind of cookie you made. This represents the surface of your sun. Then add some chocolate chips. These represent sunspots. A sunspot is a dark region of the sun's surface that has a much lower temperature than the surrounding surface, hence the dark color. 
Next, add some sprinkles. These represent solar flares. A solar flare is a brief eruption of energy from the surface of the sun. This usually results in a bright flash of light from the sun's surface. Last, add a piece of licorice and loop it so that it comes out and goes back around. This represents a prominence. A prominence is a bright loop that extends from the sun's surface. And lastly, enjoy. It's never safe to look directly at the sun, but luckily there are many ways to safely view the sun. Try this experiment from the Stanford Solar Center. You can easily and safely observe the sun by projecting it through a tiny hole onto a piece of paper. This device is called a pinhole projector. To make a pinhole projector, you'll need two sheets of stiff paper. This could be cardstock, index cards, or even a cereal box, a pin or a paper clip, and a sunny day. With the pin, punch a hole into the center of one of your pieces of paper. Be careful that you don't stab your fingers on the other side. Go outside and hold the paper up. Aim the hole at the sun. Do not look at the sun either through the hole or in any other way. Now, find the image of the sun which comes through the hole. Move your other piece of paper back and forth until the image looks the best. What you are seeing is an actual projection of the sun coming through the paper. Experiment by making your holes larger or smaller. What happens to the image? What do you think would happen if you punched a thousand holes and did the same thing? Remember, never look directly at the sun and always protect yourself from the sun's harmful radiation. And as always, keep investigating. You've got astronomy and physics, botany and ecology, zoology, geology, chemistry and biology. Want to understand the world and all that it is? Then sit back and kick it with this, this is science with.